Coming up, making a splash. The weirdest thing about swimming is doing freestyle land, like swimming like a mermaid underwater. Really, I just like to swim. I love swimming because it's really fun. What you need to know when you head to the pool, beach, or lake to go swimming. Then we'll dive into the world's oceans and find out how you can help protect our blue planet. Also, Stars and Stripes, the history of the American flag and what it means. The flag, it shows American spirit and perseverance. Flag is symbol for our country that shows patriotism. Plus, we'll introduce you to the new baby sloth bear cubs, melting hearts of the Philadelphia Zoo. Wait until you hear what their favorite snack is. You'll love that. And play ball. What's the best part about baseball? Hit the ball. We'll visit a field where everyone is a winner. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm Lester Holt. It's great to be with you on a Saturday morning. We have a super lineup ahead, including a look at these adorable sloth bear cubs. Plus, it's Father's Day this weekend, and we have a few fun facts to share with you about this holiday. But let's begin now with the start of swimming season. As the temperatures climb, kids and grown-ups alike are starting to cool off with a dip in the pool or a trip to the beach. Here with details on how you can swim safely this summer is our good friend Dylan Dreyer. In the summer, when it gets hot, there's nothing more refreshing than a cool dip. Being in the water, it, it feels like I have, it feels like I'm in space. The weirdest thing about swimming is doing freestyle land, like swimming like a mermaid underwater. So, how do you make sure to stay safe while splashing? Here are our top tips. Make sure you always have a grown-up watching you while you're swimming, even when there's a lifeguard around. Go swimming with a friend, have a buddy in the water, and look out for each other. Follow signs on water safety. Don't go swimming if you see a closed sign. Use a Coast Guard-approved life vest if you're not a strong swimmer. Most importantly, learn how to swim. When you learn how to swim, you also learn what to do when you get tired. You learn how to know what your comfort is with the water, and you learn how to float. Really, I just like to swim. I learned how to swim so I can get refreshed and, like, cool. I love swimming because it's really fun, and I get to play in the water. I learned about how to make bubbles underwater and bubbles with your nose and with your mouth. When it comes to swimming in rivers, lakes, and oceans, remember to watch out for tides and currents. Sometimes it's hard to see where the water can pull you around. And don't swim too far out. Stay close to shore so people can see where you are. Make sure there's a lifeguard on duty and you want to swim as close as possible to a lifeguard. Keep an eye on you. You want to swim parallel to shore and get out of that little area where the rip currents are. If they're not that good a swimmer, I, I suggest staying no deeper than your waist. But what if you found you floated out farther than you wanted? Don't jump off your boogie board and panic and try to swim in. Just stay on that boogie board uh, or any flotation device that you have and uh, you're much better off than trying to swim in on your own. It's also good to stay healthy while swimming. Don't drink the water you're swimming in. At the pool, shower before you get in the water. Dry off properly after a swim, including your ears. And if you're swimming outside, don't forget about wearing sunscreen. You need to apply it and wait 15 minutes before you get into the water or into the sun because you need your skin to absorb the sunblock. And you need to reapply it every two hours because it does wear off. Tips to make sure your summer goes swimmingly with a waterful time. Some really good things to know. Dylan, thanks very much. Well, speaking of swimming and the ocean, did you ever wonder about the world's oceans and the role they play in our lives? Our good friend Kristen Dahlgren takes a look. We love to swim, surf, and sail in these waters around the world. But what exactly is an ocean? Oceans are just areas of salty water that fill enormous basins of Earth's surface. Oceans cover about 70% of the planet's surface. 
There are five designated oceans in the world, Arctic, Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, and Southern. All the oceans are connected, so some people say that it's just one ocean. Seas are technically small parts of an ocean. The Pacific Ocean is the world's largest ocean. Did you know the ocean is vital to the Earth, driving weather, regulating temperature, and supporting living organisms? Oceans are absolutely vital to our health. About half of the oxygen that we breathe comes from plants that grow in the ocean. So every other breath you take is thanks to the ocean, even if you live nowhere near it. The oceans also help keep Earth healthy by moving water around the planet. It makes sure that no place is too hot or too cold. And the ocean also captures a lot of the carbon that we emit. That's the chemical that is heating the atmosphere with climate change. Plus, the ocean is just full of animals that we love and want to protect. Speaking of those animals, the ocean is incredibly biodiverse. It has the largest animal to ever live, the blue whale and some of the smallest animals in existence. Each layer of the ocean has a different habitat. There are different microhabitats based on, you know, the salt marsh, the mangrove, the temperature. It's an incredible place and we haven't even mapped the entire ocean. So there's so much left to discover. Parts of the ocean are really deep, you know, up to seven miles down and it's very difficult to get down there. It's difficult to study. And so some people say that in some cases, we might know more about outer space than we know about the bottom of the ocean. And guess what? There are some things you can do to help protect the ocean. There are so many things you can do. So wear reef safe sunscreen. Scientists have found that there are some chemicals in sunscreen that can affect marine life negatively, especially coral, dolphins, and sea turtles. So just look for a sunscreen that's labeled reef safe you can also leave shells on the beach that you find. Shells are homes for small animals like hermit crabs and other critters, and they need them more than you do. Even shell fragments are really important parts of the habitat. So they can be attachment points for algae and seaweed, and they also stop coastal erosion. So when the tides come in and they pull some of the sand back out, having those shell fragments helps hold the beach in place. And finally, when you're leaving the beach, on your way out, pick up all your trash, make sure that nothing gets left behind. And then you also wanna smooth out any holes that you dug in the sand. It's really fun and I totally get it. Uh, some hatchling sea turtles can sometimes get stuck in the holes if they're a little bit too deep. And for those of us who don't live near an ocean, you can still do your part, like cleaning up your local creek and not releasing balloons into the air. They always fall back down to earth. They often end up in the ocean. And a recent study found that balloons are the most dangerous trash for seabirds. And one of the best things you can do is to learn more about our blue planet and encourage others to dive in and help. When we think about the problems that are facing the ocean, it can feel really overwhelming, but we need everybody to help. If everybody gets involved, we can fix these problems together. Kristen, thanks very much. This week, the nation marked Flag Day, a time to pay respect and honor a symbol of the United States. More now on the history of the American flag and what it means. The flag, it shows American spirit and perseverance. It's a symbol of America. The American flag to me is like unity because the 50 stars represent the 50 states in the United States and the stripes are like are where we originally came from. On June 14th, 1777, the Second Continental Congress passed a resolution adopting the stars and stripes as an official flag for the United States. It uh, represents the freedom that we gained from the British colonies. Between 1777 and 1960, Congress passed several acts that changed the shape, design, and arrangement of the flag and allowed stars and stripes to be added to reflect the admission of each new state. Did you know on August 3rd, 1949, President Harry Truman officially declared June 14th as Flag Day?
It represents to me a symbol of unity, a reminder to preserve and protect that unity and that, that sense of community that the country has and to look out for each other. The colors of the flag are symbolic as well. Red symbolizes hardiness and valor. White stands for purity and innocence. And blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. It's kind of a symbol of hope, it's a symbol of freedom that they'll be able to get if they make it. Flag is a symbol for our country that shows patriotism and every day pledge our allegiance to the flag um, as a symbol of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. There are certain rules called flag etiquette that have long been established to make sure the flag is treated with respect and dignity. Making sure it doesn't touch the ground, obviously. Um, raising it and lowering it when you're supposed to, like not having it out during storms, keeping good care of it. And guess what else? American flags should always hang freely, but never upside down, with the stars at the bottom, except if you are in distress. And when you display an American flag in the window, the flag should be displayed with the Union, or blue field, to the left of how it is seen from the street. Proper etiquette also calls for the American flag to be illuminated by sunlight or another light source while on display. And did you ever wonder how to fold an American flag? When you're folding the American flag, you're going to fold it twice. This group of kids from Texas who volunteered at a recent Memorial Day event for the nonprofit Carry the Load showed us how. Fold it in half lengthwise, and then fold it again, ensuring that the, the stars are on the top, like this, and on the bottom. And then you're going to, from the stripes, you're going to make nice, crisp, right triangles until you get to the end and then stick, st stick it into the pocket that you've made. Great job. Keeping the flag folded is a great way to store this symbol of our nation, ensuring the Star Spangled Banner can fly high for years to come. Just ahead, the sloth bear cubs are turning heads at the zoo in Pennsylvania. We're there with details. They are bouncing around. They are playing with one another. They're playing with mom, or at least trying to. And they are finding new things, and you can almost see what looks similar to human joy on their faces sometimes. Plus, buddy ball. What's the best part about baseball? Oh, Hit the ball. Colin. Come on, Colin, you got it, buddy. Good job, Colin. We'll visit this baseball diamond in New Jersey where the score doesn't matter, it's the community that counts. Coming here, I was struck by just how many people were on the field. It really gives that community feel, right? Buddy Baseball is 100% community. Everybody comes out, all of Bayonne knows what Buddy Baseball is, and the support we have is incredible. And what's on your mind? Hi, my name is Henry, and I want to know what makes the grass green in spring? We'll answer that question and more when we come back. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. Time for our pop quiz now. And in honor of Father's Day this weekend, we have a fun one for you. The question is, what is the most popular Father's Day gift? A, golf clubs, B, greeting card, or C, necktie? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Notice we didn't say power tools. That's a cool one. But anyway, time's up. According to the National Retail Federation, the most popular Father's Day gift is B, a greeting card. As a dad and granddad, those are always my favorite too, especially the handmade ones. And did you know Father's Day was almost a forgotten holiday? Back in 1926, a group called the Father's Day Committee formed to revive the day. They started honoring dads with the Father of the Year Award back in 1942. And it was President Richard Nixon who recognized Father's Day as an official holiday in 1972 to be marked on the third Sunday in June. We hope you guys enjoy time with your family this weekend and happy Father's Day.
All right, let's turn now to what's on your mind. We received this question recently from one of our viewers, Henry in Chicago. Take a listen. Hi, my name is Henry and I want to know what makes the grass green in spring? All right, Henry, that's a great question. Here to help us answer that one is our good pal, Dr. John Torres. When you look all around me, you see a lot of green grass. But the question is, why is grass the color green? Well, the simple answer is because of the way it uses sunlight. The more complicated answer is it uses that sunlight to convert into energy so the grass can grow. And here's how it does it. There are little molecules inside the grass called chlorophyll. They take certain wavelengths of the sunlight and convert those into energy. Now think of a rainbow. All those colors are different wavelengths. But in this case, the colors we look at are green, red, and blue. And what the grass does with that chlorophyll, it takes the red and the blue along with water and converts that into energy. That way the grass can grow. But with the green wavelength, it reflects that back out to you. So you're seeing everything as this beautiful green color. Now the other question is, why am I holding these juggling clubs and can I actually juggle them? Well, we're about to find out. So here goes. Ah, oh, not yet, but I'm gonna learn. All right, Dr. John, great answer, thanks, and nice try with the juggling. Now we want to head to Syracuse, New York, where two rare Amur tiger cubs were recently born at the Rosamond Gifford Zoo. The two cubs, one male and one female, arrived in late April and were told they're doing well. Amur tigers, also known as Siberian tigers, are considered to be one of the largest cats in the world. Meantime, the Detroit Zoo just welcomed this baby giraffe. The zoo says five-year-old Zara had the male calf on May 31st, but the newborn was slightly underweight, so the zoo's veterinary team stepped in to help care for the calf. And now mom and baby are doing well. And while we're on the subject of animals, a new pair of sloth bear cubs just made their public debut at the Philadelphia Zoo, and they're getting a lot of attention. Our friend Aaron McLaughlin has details. <laughs> There's two new babies at the Philadelphia Zoo, and they're just too cute to bear. Born to Mama Bear Kayla and Papa Bear Balu, these little cubs stepped out of the den just last week and have been exploring their new habitat ever since. So our two new bear cubs are doing great with their mom, Kayla. They are bouncing around, they are playing with one another, they're playing with mom, or at least trying to, and they are finding new things and you can almost see what looks similar to human joy on their faces sometimes. This particular species of bear is called a sloth bear, but don't let the name fool you. So sloth bears are not related to sloths at all. They're two completely different animals from completely different areas of the world. Sloth bears are named after sloths in English because the English explorers who found them noticed that they have claws on their hands that look very similar to the claws that sloths have. That's really the only thing they have in common. Did you know sloth bears can eat over 40,000 insects in just one day? They're equipped with pointy snouts and super strong lungs to help them vacuum up as many insects as possible. And while bugs are some of their favorite snacks, along with twigs and berries, they also enjoy a special treat at the zoo that you might like yourself. Peanut butter. It's one of their absolute favorite snacks. Sloth bears are solitary animals, which means they love their alone time and live alone as adults. However, these tiny cubs will stay with their mom for about one to two years before going out on their own. And while they were only a few ounces when they were born and are still pretty small, they could grow up to be a whopping 300 pounds each as adults. The sloth bear is considered a vulnerable species, which means that they aren't endangered yet. But they are at risk if humans don't help to take care of them. They are threatened by habitat loss. Much of the forest where they naturally live is being cut down for various reasons. So these sloth bear cubs are not only incredibly cute and we love them very much, they're also very important for the survival of their species. Ah, that's great, Erin. Thanks so much. Finally, in our Inspiring Kids series, we head to a field in New Jersey where a group of kids are hitting it out of the park in a league with no limits. Our pal Joe Fryer with that story. 
baseball has always been considered a team sport. But in Bayonne, New Jersey, team takes on a whole new meaning. What's the best part about baseball? Hit the ball. We're going to go this way, okay? Pete Amadeo is the town's recreation superintendent, the guy who made this league for kids with special needs a hit. You got this. Step on third, step on third. Nice. They call it buddy baseball because players are paired with volunteers who help them round the bases. Coming here, I was struck by just how many people were on the field. It really gives that community feel, right? Buddy baseball is 100% community. Everybody comes out. All of Bayonne knows what buddy baseball is. And the support we have is incredible. Colin. Come on, Colin, you got it, buddy. Good job, Colin. For Colin Gerbis and his dad, Chris, it's a game changer. It's a wonderful way to get these kids together and to, to build lasting friendships. How many hits do you have? Do you have a lot of hits? Two hits today. How does it feel to get all those hits? Good. Go, 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 go. As for the buddies, on this day, they come from the town's high school teams and the fire department. It's been one of my favorite days of the year so far, just the enthusiasm that these people bring, just to see the smiles on their faces when they get you know all around and then they finally touch home. Oh! That's a great slide, oh! And that's the thing. That's it. Every player gets a hit every time. Oh, We're going home. We're going home. And eventually, Come on, Mariah. makes it home. Good job, Mariah. Great I didn't see anyone ever get out. No one makes it out. We're all safe. That's an important word, safe. We're all safe. And when you come to the field, you know, we do feel safe with one another. Here we go. One, two, three. Good job. One, that inclusivity means a lot to Maddie Klein and his mom. Yes! You want the best for your kids and you want them to be happy and you want people to see them the way you see them. To have an environment where they're celebrated for exactly who they are, that's probably the goal of most of us. On opening day, they even had a parade, one of the biggest events in town. Celebrating a sport where, instead of the score, it's the community that counts. One, two, Joe, what a great story. Thanks for bringing that to us. Well, that's going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, feel free to email a video to us at nightlynewskids at NBCUni.com. We'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. And just a program note, you can catch a new episode of Nightly News Kids Edition every Thursday on NBCNews.com and YouTube and streaming on the weekends on NBC News Now. Thanks for watching, and remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long. You got this. Step on third, step on third. Nice.